Tim and Veronica Crack Bradley. Clay. Cracked Clay. Our mess. His miracle. So we're trying something new tonight. Instead of using the phone, oh good, I see, I can see comments over here. Shining through. We are using oh, my laptop, that funny little story. Can I share how blonde I am, really? Oh, honey, yes. Yeah. For months, for months, I couldn't figure out why my camera wasn't working. I've been doing all the things and checking it, checking it, Googling it, calling Microsoft. Y'all, there's a kill switch on the laptop. I turned the camera off on this side. Guess who told her? Was no. it wasn't me? It wasn't me. I just happened to be looking at the at the bit at the computer yesterday morning when a little message popped up and said your kill switch was on is on. If you want to use your camera, turn it off. Right. We have a lot of red here tonight. Anyway, see that liberty. We're celebrating liberty tonight for Why? two reasons. So number one. Our Liberty Flames. Shh. Hot. Our 8 and 0. Yes. On fire. Only three more games left in the season. Three more games. 8 and 0. We can go 11 and 0. We play North Carolina State yet on the road. Back here against UMass. And then another ranked team, Coastal Carolina in their park. We have a chance to go 11 and 0. The Liberty University. Raising champions for Christ where they teach conservatism as a way of life. Give me liberty. Give me liberty or give, or give me death. Week, Honey, I got a question. Give me liberty. About 20, when I first got in the hearing aid business 23 years ago and I went back to school and I passed and I was ready to get my license, I had to have a drug test. Mm -hmm. Now, why couldn't have I mailed a drug test in? Why can I just mail a drug test in and and let them tell me I'm fine. I'm, what's wrong with that? Well, I mean, if, the, if a certain party says it's okay to mail in a ballot, wouldn't well, it okay for me to sit in my drug test back 25 years ago when I became a hearing instrument specialist? And not have it screened. And not have it... And, and, and not have it verified and for how much urine I mean, I wouldn't actually use any, specimen. I wouldn't use anybody else's urine. I probably would back then because I was lost. I didn't have a savior. He wasn't my boss then. But he is now. But we're having a certain party that is anti my boss, Christ, and anti American. And they think maybe it's because of the coronavirus is what opened the door to that. That's what I'm thinking. Open the door that we can't go out and touch anybody, so we have to mail in our ballot. Hmm. But not necessarily. It's but amazing. I, but I How wonder if people? I would have called Miracle Ear back then and says, you know what, guys, I'm just going to mail in my drug test. You think they'd fall for that? Probably not. Not in a minute. Probably not. Not in a minute. Guys, we we have some awesome things going on in America. The same practice that's been used in Venezuela, in Cuba, China, all these countries that all of a sudden go communism and vote it in. There's a reason for it. Joseph Stalin said it's not who votes. It's who counts the vote. And it's all being right now being done in America. And all the proof, we have all the proof that the Democrats stole it. I actually thought Trump was going to win like over 400 electric college delegates. I think that might come to pass when the smoke is clear. Guys, what a mock, what a, the media was completely silent on what happened in D.C. yesterday. Oh my goodness. Completely silent. Do you realize how evil that is? Do you all know there were over evil that is? Uh, 1 million people in D.C. One, one million, yesterday. 100,000 people. There. Like know, 1.2 million realize people. Realize how people. evil that is. Honey, don't touch it. I don't. I well, Why'd you do that okay, for? So I didn't. I'm sorry. Hey, keep going. Do you realize how evil that is? That the people, the media is not covering that? 1.2 million people were, were there for our president, for President Trump yesterday in D.C. And the media was not there covering it. Not Fox, not CNN. And not to mention the censorship of, of Facebook but then, and other... But then, but then, last night, the and we learned this stuff from people who were there live streaming it, right? And there was one news source, I think it... I would post it and I'll take it to, off. They said, you can't do this. Y yes! 
We posted actual I posted, pictures that they, friends were there saying, and that's posted, not true. and they censored it on Facebook and said that it was inaccurate. It was false information. Republicans oh. and Democrats. Oh. Even if you are a Democrat listening to this, this you not cannot about, think this is okay. This is not if about you me. are a Democrat listening to this. You've got to stop and question why. It's not about why do we Democrat. have friends in DC yesterday taking pictures? 1.2 million people there. We post share their picture, and Facebook censors us and says right. that it's not true. Seriously, we know the people there. We're not making it up. Why would you've got to right. ask yourself why? So we watched last night. A great movie called A Call A Call to Spy about women spies based on true story, true women during World War Two when um, Germany had invaded and part of France had oh, fallen yeah. and part of France had fallen right. to um, to Germany already Nazi, to Nazi to the Nazis already and um, Winston Churchill authorized women as spies. It was the right. first use of women in combat. I mean, as a spy. Well. Great movie, but it was amazing to us. We were like mouth open during some of the scenes when they talked about like there was a. It's here happening here. Like they picked up a newspaper, one of the spies, right. and she's reading the propaganda about the Jews, and she's we saw a lot of them like seeing lies about the Jews and how horrible they are, and she's like, this isn't true. And then they had some exhibition about the Jews and how horrible they are, and it's lined up for people to go inside. And the media was controlling the narrative. There was even a preacher who was a double agent working for the Nazis, but preaching against the Nazis. His sermons were infamous in France against the Nazis because he was a double agent so that he could root out who the spies were and turn them into the Nazis. Seriously, I feel like, and I am not exaggerating, but I feel like we are so we're, headed down that direction. Right we're, we're half, it's, it's happening, happening right with the media now. right now. That the narrative is being controlled by the media, right. saying that we are crazy, that we conservatives who are supporting Trump, who think that the, the election was stolen, that we're the crazy ones, right. saying that we're hateful, we're full of hatred, that they have made people believe that conservatives right. and Christians are the hateful ones. But you look, if you looked at the any of if they didn't take down all the videos that I shared from Twitter last night, I tried not to comment so much that they wouldn't take it down. I shared one of a Trump supporter trying to leave a hotel and the Antifa BLM, BLM people are terrorizing him. And then they're throwing, he's an older gentleman, and they're like throwing Urine. Liquid urine, urine on, him on him as he goes down the street. That, who's the crazy? Who's the evil person there? It's not the Trump supporter, let me tell you. No, and then then there were there were the conservatives singing God Bless America. And then you have the... Jesus Christ is And king. then you have BLM and Antifa throwing grenades at people trying to have a cookout. Seriously? So what a contrast, guys. Well, 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 what a contrast. Why wouldn't Biden want to say... You know, this is America. Democracy depends on our vote. Because we, the people, decide who, who who works for us. But if they take that away, why would the Democrats say, go ahead and, oh, make sure this is valid. Make sure this is accurate and true. No, they're not going to do it because they're behind it. And now the Democrats are even saying, boy, I cannot believe that Trump and all this are holding this up from this election that we won. How evil is that? This is the mindset of godless, communism, antichrist. I even saw... People. It is mind-blowing. But guess what, guys? We have to pray for three things diligently. That truth will win out. That fraud will be... Exposed. Exposed. And that justice, justice will be served. Will serve. And pray those three things. We, there, even all the time. I am using most of the time now... Duck, duck, go. But yesterday, I did have something come up to me um, through CNN. It was a CNN article. I think I was on going to my Yahoo email, and an article came up from CNN saying, or MSNB saying that Biden intends to shut the country down for four to six weeks after his, once he's inaugurated. And then the as soon be as good. he's inaugurated, and that they, it's going to revive the economy. What? These are the Do lies. Do people believe that? These are the Do lies. Do people believe that stopping our right. economy for four to six weeks is going to revive our economy? How in the world? How 
how in the world do people fall for this? I don't right. even understand it. I don't understand. Cruise Chef said we're going to take over America by not. And we're not going to fire one shot. They have so infiltrated America. This is what's happening right now. Other countries are behind the voting booths and the, the chips in them. So you understand that? Karl Marx said, if you keep telling the same lies over and over and over and over again, eventually people are going to believe you. And that's what's happening right now. And and this is only a fortitude of what we're really going to talk about. My wife, we're, we got some awesome things for married couples. And right after that, I'm going to answer the question right here from C.S. Lewis, from C.S. Lewis, right after this awesome presentation. Are you living for the dot or the line? Okay, let's, let's, but let's, ironically, as we go back to Tony Evans' Kingdom right. Marriage, um, we're talking about resources tonight, right? and it's uh, right. financial help, but as well as financial resources, it's your time and your talents, right? Let me start with this quote that Tony Evans put in this book from How Appropriate, an, 18, an 1863 speech calling for a national day of prayer and fasting. Abraham Lincoln right. said this, We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserves us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have been, we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pay, to, too proud to pray to the God that made us. Wow, if he thought that in 1863. During the Civil War? Can you imagine what he would say today about our nation if he thought we'd fallen so far from God then? Oh, goodness. Oh, my Look at us goodness. Now. Where everything that's wrong is right and right is wrong. It's Let's start with this here. craziness. Yeah, so. One of the happiest seasons in marriage for a lot of couples was when they start out without a dime to their names, but, but knew that their love would take on the world. Two decades later, and the apartment has turned into a house. Two new leases have replaced the used car, and a trip to the relatives is now a trip to the sea. These same couples bicker and fight about financial because lack of contentment has set in. There's always a bigger house to be had, a newer car to drive, nicer clothes to buy, and better places to go. It seems as if the more exposed people are to what they can do, the more they want to buy or be. So, one of the greatest contributors to um, to a marriage. Wait, hold on. one of the greatest contributors to financial health in a marriage is contentment. Contentment, because think about that. If you're content, you're not trying to outspend the neighbors, are you? You're content with what you have, and the absence of contentment has led to many failed marriages. And so, and it. it what happens is a couples then start, and it also happens in our, we don't have to be married for this to happen. We can happen while we're single too. Um, but it is something that we, since we're focused on our marriage, so it really is for everyone. But um, anyway, so what happens when we're not content is we start to live outside of the available means that we have, our available budget, we accrue debt, and that leads to financial strain on your relationship. We also, he talks about the dependency of a two-income home, and not that a wife doesn't have value in the workplace, but there are seasons for everything in life. And when we've talked about this many times in the past, and he doesn't hit it as hard as we've talked about it in the past, but we've always said in everything we've read, the couple should be able to live on just his income. Her income should be a choice. Right. Correct? All right. Um, yeah, live within your means, like we're going to talk about. Right, here. right. So, we're trying to keep up with the Joneses, which right. then we always get a bigger us, house. Which then cons content. Co which right. then um, causes us to pursue careers at the expense of our relationship. Because when you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, right, and you're having to work harder and harder and longer hours, then you're not spending as much time with your mate. 
and it creates marital stress and conflict. We can't seem to, and then we have our children. We can't seem to buy enough stuff to keep our kids happy. And ironically, God can't seem to give us enough stuff to keep his kids happy either, right? Uh, a lack of contentment, although he says, doesn't seem new. And he goes that because Paul talked about it in Philippians. Um, Paul called it a secret. The art, of, the art of being satisfied is a secret. He says in Philippians 4.12, right. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being, fu being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. Think about that. He knew how to be happy whether he had little or whether he had much. You know why? Because happiness and true joy and contentment is not based on what you have. It, it can only come from Jesus. So you can only really find your contentment in your relationship with the Lord. The rest of it is, yeah. is temporal. So, like I like this analogy, like thermometers, many marriages go up and down based on the temperature of the bank account. Right? Um, so contentment means having the resources, having the resources available to handle whatever it is you're dealing with, whether it's you have enough at any given time for your needs, not your wants, but your needs, whether it's enough as a little or enough as a lot. Contentment means being at rest, thankful and grateful for whatever situation you find yourself in. You can tell someone's contentment level by their attitude. Right. Are they complaining or are they grateful. More money does not automatically mean you are content, does it? Mm -mm. And then as Tim said, one of the happiest times in marriage is when couples are newlyweds and they are, they broke. they're flat broke. Both broke. Right. They're broke. Building it together. Right. They build it together. Sometimes you're in life, it waxes and wanes. Everything in life waxes and wanes. Sometimes you're up financially, sometimes you're down. A couple in a kingdom marriage is going to focus on what's most important regardless of the ups and downs, and that is their relationship with God first Amen. and their relationship with each other Amen. second. Okay. Stewardship principles in marriage. Psalms 24.1 says, The earth is the Lord's, and all it contains. Right. All it contains. So financial issues still rank as one of the top reasons for divorce in our country. Finances and sex, the, number two reason, the top two reasons for divorce. Money and sex. Mm -hmm. um, so, But if we, as Christians, think about it from a kingdom perspective, and we, we use our resources from a kingdom perspective, then we don't have to worry about that. We worry the battle is not with each other on how to use the resources if you're both on the same page that you're serving the Lord with your resources, right? right. Um, so the Lord gives us the gift of life each morning. He gives us the universe. He gives us all of our needs. Yet we often forget to thank him for those. And we, we often forget that they're every, it's all his. Well, it's, and we try to make it about us. Everything we, we try to make it about us, not about him. And so we squander our times, our time, our talents, our treasures that he's given us by investing them in ourselves and our own selfish goals instead of asking what the Lord wants us to do with them. Right? And Wake they, up thankful every morning. Every morning, wake up thankful. The couples, and you know what? And it's hard Sunday. I mean... Yeah. These days, I I have to, you know, I journal, I've talked before about how I do gratitude journaling, and sometimes before I can get to my gratitude, because I'm always grateful for the Lord, but there's so much going on in our world today that I have to get all that out. I feel like it becomes a complaining journal, but I just have to get it out. It's more of a prayer journal now. I write out all that's bothering me to kind of release it, and then I write about what I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, and so... We, when we keep in mind as kingdom couples that our resources are not ours, they are his, he owns them, and they are to be used to advance his kingdom agenda on earth, then we're going to have a lot better marriage, right? Because we're going to be living within his will. And you think about how much joy and freedom we would experience if we remembered that our legacy in life and our reward in eternity don't depend on our bank account. Our, let me say that again. Our legacy that we leave here on earth and our rewards when we get to heaven are not about our bank account. 
We come in butt naked and we leave butt naked. It's not our bank account. It's about the lives that God touches right. through us, Amen. right? And so he has appointed us to be the stewards of his right. resources. Right. Not mine, not Tim's, not yours, not anyone else's. They're all right. his resources. He owns it all. And when we truly recognize that, then we can let we can loosen our grip on things in our lives and increase our generosity towards God and towards others. We can lessen the possessiveness feeling and the feelings of entitlement. And this changes your mindset from a me versus you to a us under God, right? So then we have responsibility of stewardship. As we said, God has generous, generously given us everything that we need to live. He's given us time, resources, talents, abilities. He expects his faithful stewards to invest in his right. eternal kingdom purposes. Amen. Amen. Everything else everything else that we invest our money in, I mean, I like to shop, but that is that that is not eternal. That's not eternal. The only thing that matters is how we spend our money for his purpose, his kingdom, the things that are going to make an eternal difference, right? So he's going to hold us accountable for his stewardship one day, for how we Absolutely. stewardship the, his resources. Uh, what he's given to us. Uh, his resources. What do we do? And do how, do how is he going to evaluate do do us? How is he going to evaluate us on how we've spent his resources? Um, Paul compares stewardship to constructing a building in 1 Corinthians 3. He says, a wise builder must take care to lay a strong foundation and build it with proven materials. Likewise, we need to um, use the time, talents, and treasures God's given us and invest them in eternity or, or store up true gold and store up true gold for eternity in heaven, right? For treasures in heaven, not here on earth. Everything we build on earth will be burned up, but the eternal treasures will endure mm -hmm. forever. And the rewards of stewardship, he is also rewards us when we care for his resources. He holds us accountable if we're lazy. And this is not a prosperity gospel. No. But you've heard many times, to whom much is given, much is expected. He's going to see how you handle the little before he gives you more, right? Mm -hmm. Think about the parable of the talents in Luke about the master went away and he gave, you know, what's it called? Minna to three different servants. And one multiplied it and he was rewarded for that and praised publicly and the second one also multiplied it but not as much and he was rewarded and given a little bit more but not as much as the first one and the third one he had buried it right he buried it so then he was Same. called a worthless steward he was called he was rebuked by the master and right. called worthless because he didn't he didn't invest it wisely so he was severely punished all right, and we that's a uh, parable for us to use in our personal lives with the resources that the Lord gives us. Don't just bury it and save it for a time that may never come. Um, it, so we should pray for the Holy Spirit's help to maintain an yeah. attitude of gratitude in anticipation of the Lord's return. We should be praying and actively looking for opportunities to use our time, our talent, our resources and treasures that he's given us for his kingdom. If, if like just... the door doesn't, people don't always come to you and say, hey, can you do this? Can you give for this? But the, you should be seeking that out. That's what I'm saying. You should be seeking out opportunity to serve the Lord with your talents, with your time, to and to give financially to, to his purposes. Amen. All right? I'm just so glad, honey, that we, that God called you and me to do the same thing for his kingdom and his glory. I just mm -hmm. love that. I love yeah. that, too. So yeah. um, we're to make the most of the generous resources he has loaned us uh, to expand yeah. his kingdom and to make his glory known to as many people as possible. The final thoughts on money give save spend right right because he doesn't want us to be like uh the seven drawers going off to work Dad, ho. I, Dad, I, ho. I owe i owe I so owe, off to death off to work i go I said, it's off, off to jail off off to work i go yeah go there's ahead. no debtor jail go. anymore um and so proverbs 227 says do not be says the borrower becomes the lender slave that is correct isn't it have you ever been in debt you are definitely work you are spending your time to earn the money to pay off the bill you are the slave to that that bar that lender 
And that is not the gospel. So debt is, and debt is not just about money. It is about your spiritual connection to God. No. That you and your spouse fully maximize all that God has created you to do and live out your shared purpose. In order for you to do that, then you need to get a handle on your resources. Right? So first you need to give. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 says, Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce, so your barns will be filled with plenty. So give that's pretty basic give and people think that well I don't make enough money to give or I have too much debt to give if well, you if you give in faith he'll return it twofold just we don't we don't we don't see that because it's all by faith mm -hmm. sometimes my wife and I will think oh honey we should have did that because it would have been by faith if we give by faith knowing that God's going to give it back but we do it out of a joyful heart it's got to be a joyful heart and sometimes I mean and yeah, and we give, we you. give, and I, but I have been in a position in my life, um, in in the past, way in the past, and that I I tied almost what was left in my bank account just because I knew that growing up in the church I should have tied, and I had no idea how I was going to do anything that okay, week. And the Lord worked it out. I mean, the Lord always works it out. If you're faithful to Him, He's faithful to you. Just remember that. Here's so when you think you can't, you need to. Believer. You need to pray about it. Mm -hmm. And I still pray because we're self-employed. And it's been a hard year. I pray every week about what the Lord wants me to right. give. And what we should be giving in our time. Um, it's, it's, our, yeah. our business is down from last year because of the virus. But that, yeah. but that doesn't mean people's needs aren't down. Mm -mm. We still got to step up and right. do it by faith. Mm -hmm. Do it by faith. And sometimes he says to give a mount, and I'm like, what? Because Did I hear that that's right? the difference between the dot and the line. Mm -hmm. We're gonna throw that okay, save, save. A portion of every right. dollar you earn should go into savings. Just think about Joseph and how he stockpiled the food, and so he was able to, for a seven-year famine, um, not only feed Egypt, but also other other kingdoms who came and, and got food from them. Um, and then lastly, spend, but spend wisely. He says it's it's okay to play hard. It's okay to go and have a good time, but enjoy life and enjoy your life. But also you need to play smart. So Proverbs 21.5 says, The plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but everyone who is hasty surely comes to poverty. So make a plan. Don't just be an impulse spender. Stop and do things. I stop and, and do it. Use it wisely. Because Spend wisely. here's why. Oh, letting mm -hmm. money. Let me, one more thing. This yeah, is a sure. really important thing. I yeah. like this. Yeah. Um, so your spending needs to be done with wisdom and restraint. And when you do that, when you follow the principles of give, save, and spend, and you experience freedom from debt, right. then you stop letting money be your boss. Your money is not your boss because money becomes your boss when you are so stressed about it and you're working hard to make it so that you can pay off all the debt. What did we hear this week? Somebody said it's about the past. You're, you spend so much time paying off the past, you can't focus on the future or today. That's and what that's what debt is. is. What that's what debt is. We worry is. about the past, we can't think about the future. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to what, when you... C.S. Lewis says, all of eternity can be compared to a continuous line that has no beginning and no end. And all of human history is like a tiny dot in that line. And inside that dot of human history, there is a microscopic dot that represents all of your life here on this earth. So the question is, I want to ask you right now, are you living for the dot or for that line? Because our life is going to go forever. That little dot is here on earth. That little dot inside that dot is our life on earth. That's it. We're here but a short time. So why would we want to put all of our resources on that little tiny dot where we live forever? The choice is clear. I, like I said about the other day, just, just a little bit ago, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go get to the end of my life and have a long list of regrets. 
No, I don't. Peter, someone asked me the other day at work, he said, why are you so gun-ho about Jesus? That's because for 50 years, I took people away from Jesus. I was a Paul, a present-day Paul, in my dad's churches and churches. I, I did, though. Well, you didn't I took away from Jesus. I, I made fun of that Christianity. So now, as a believer, I want to talk more about Jesus and everything. Because I want to, I'm living, I'm not living for this earth. My only job on this earth right now is to be a great husband to my wife and a great dad. But first and foremost, to bring as many people as I can to heaven with me on earth. Because God is who he said he is. Jesus is God. I'm going to read, I'm going to quote, with, I'm just going to end with a couple of verses here in, um, John 8, 38. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Adam was, I am. When Thomas saw, one of his disciples saw the nail print in Jesus' hand, he says, My Lord and my God. And I'm going to close with this. In Philippians. In Philippians. Listen to this, Philippians, that at that at the name of Jesus, Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Jesus is God. He came to earth and lived a, a life as a sinless man, but he was all man. And then he died on the cross for you and for me. We have to accept the gift of eternal life. That's what believe is to be, live, to live how you, be how you live. That's how Jesus wants us to be. It's a relationship with the king of kings and the creator of the universe. How awesome is that? So my, I want to bring as many people as I can to heaven with me. Not the other place. I don't want people to go to hell. I want people to go to heaven. And our churches aren't talking enough about mm -hmm. hell. Because it's real. Some of our churches don't talk about it's hell real. at all anymore. It's just a positive gospel. The positive Jesus is love. Yes, Jesus is love. That's and why Jesus, he's giving you a way out amen, of hell. Amen. And Jesus right? loves Republicans and he loves Democrats. And everybody needs Jesus. No matter who you are. You need Jesus, like I did 14 years ago. I, we love you guys. Thank you. Y'all, okay, so... Pray those three things. We, we are not giving up hope. We are still oh, no. praying continuously every day. We're on our knees. We're praying for this election. Amen. We're praying for truth to be revealed. Amen. For the truth to come out. For the truth to just shine through. I'm Amen. praying for the There's shackles a... to... To be removed. I'm praying for the, the truth to be exposed. For the scales to be removed from the eyes of the people who are believing the lies, the believing the lies of the media. There's a lot of what There's is a lot right of people now. and There's the people a, who right. consider themselves Christians but believe it's un, that it's godly to vote for murder. I'm I'm praying. We are praying every day for all of those things. Defund we're the police. praying for, and defunding. There's a lot of what ifs right now. And what we, if? What we're if? Praying what if? for our president. We're praying for his help his safety that he will persevere in this and we're so we truly believe that God has put him here for a time such as this we're seeing why God raised him up because there's a lot of what ifs right now but I know who holds the what ifs in his hand and there's some things we read this weekend that are very encouraging. I don't want to talk about them because I don't know if they're true or not. I pray that they yeah. are true. Okay. We, love we pray that they are true, but, we, but we keep the faith. Stay tuned. Keep praying. Stay keep tuned. praying for the truth to pray, be revealed, pray, justice pray. to be served, mm -hmm. right? Red. Liberty. Liberty. Red. <laughs> Bye, guys. Watch the, the movie. blood. Watch that movie. You'll love it. You see it. It's happening right now. You're going to be amazed. Watch the movie. The Republicans Which are almost a like call, the Jews. A call to spy. And Nazis Watch are the, the Democrats in that movie. Really. It's, am, it's it. amazing. We All right, y'all. Have a great week. We love you.